I just put my kids to bed and while, you know, right after I'm just kind of checking my phone, I get a notification from Facebook Marketplace that there is a Taylor 214E, not the cutaway. So anyway, I'm gonna run over, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm buying a Taylor. Uh, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, you must not like Taylors, or what do you think about Taylors? Which, I really like Taylors, I just don't see them that often. So, I'm really excited to see this one. Well, it's been a long time Since I left where I'm from To start the journey I'm still on To get to you See, I've come a long way. I'm not All the right, man I'll I see you later. was that day, but I'm still searching for the things that All right. I wanted back then. You know, normal stuff. Buying a guitar in the parking lot of a Coles. But let me walk you through what just happened. Got the guitar. It's super clean. I wanted to be really careful playing it because it is um, super. It's pretty cold. It's in the 30s right now. So I actually first offered, I think, 700? I think was my first offer when we settled on 750. And I, that's when I thought that they were like 850 or 900 bucks. Uh, and then as I did some more homework, I found that they were a lot less than that. They're, you know, seven, they're probably 700, 750 is what most of them are gonna sell for. And so I told the guy, I was like, hey, I'm sorry, it's just not worth what I thought it was going to be. He's like, well, make an offer. I was like, well, okay. Full disclosure, uh, I am not a retail buyer. I have a YouTube channel and I told him and I wanted to be very careful uh, to be super respectful to him and uh, to give him an out if he wanted out. But what ended up happening was that I, I want to be in at 600 bucks. He said, can you do 625? And uh, he's got a bunch of guitars. He's just kind of clearing it out because he doesn't play it. And he was totally okay when he said like, hey, that's actually really cool. I'd love to, you know, sell you this guitar. You'd get to make a video on it, make a couple videos, and then you can sell it and find somebody that digs it. Which, that was super cool. I didn't see that coming and I was nervous because um, I don't want to be predatory. And it sucks. That's like one of the few deals I ever can think of that I realized it was like, oh, I offered too much money. I need to offer less. And then I renegotiate. But it turned out great. So it is freezing. Let's go home. And uh, tomorrow I'll break this guitar out. I'll check it out. I'll look it over. And I'll show it to you. I'm excited to talk about it and see it. I think that there are some tailors that are really incredible. And I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to talk more about tailor guitars. All right. Let's go home. I mean, not to my home. I'm going to my home. You just wait. And it'll go blunk, blunk. And we'll be in the basement. So we'll do that. There's something about Taylors that makes me want to play in E. I don't know. I just pick them up and I just want to do this. I 
I don't know. There's something about them that just makes me want to just do like driving big open chords. I think there's something to me, my brain is tied, like Taylor guitars mean praise and worship and kind of a specific kind of praise and worship that was popular when I was, you know, a teenager in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. There's something about that kind of guitar that my brain puts it into a really specific place. So I bought a Taylor. I don't normally buy Taylors and it is not because of any um, predisposition to not like them. I actually really love Taylor guitars and I love their philosophy. I think their philosophy on building guitars is the most compelling one. Uh, for me, I think it is up there. It is one of the most exciting uh, guitar brands out there because they're always doing cool, new, exciting things. And they are, their philosophy is that they believe that the best guitars are out there, that they are in the future, and we don't need to as closely tie to and feel uh, constrained by tradition. That's why if I had to pick between Martin and Taylor for philosophy of guitar building and the world to come and the life to come for us, I always think that the best world is yet to come. So, uh, with that said, why did I buy this Taylor? So this is a 214E, no C, no cutaway. So in the case, there is a uh, certificate of authenticity or a piece of paper that says that when this guitar was made, this guitar was manufactured in April of 2020. We're in December of 2020 now, so this guitar is like eight months old. That's crazy. Uh, and I bought it used, and I got a pretty good deal, I think. I told you some of the details. Here's the, here's the very brief uh, story of how I got this guitar, and then I'll jump into why I bought this guitar. So this guitar, I saw it the other day uh, on Craigslist, and I've been looking for a tailor to show on the channel. So that's kind of a shift in the kinds of guitars that I'm buying. Uh, I'm starting to buy guitars that are unique and unusual and ones that I want to focus on and I want to talk about on the channel. So I saw this uh, and I don't know a ton. I know enough about these. I know that it's a solid top. It's laminate back and sides. It's an inch and three quarter uh, nut. It's a 25.4 inch scale length. Um, and it's very much a very pretty looking tailor with the expression system, but it is satin back and sides. And so, I knew enough about this guitar to know that it's a really cool player. Um, and this fits right in that prosumer level. This is right around uh, where you're gonna spend enough money. I think new, this guitar is like $1,200, $1,300 uh, used. I bought this one for $625. I think it's worth about $800, $750, $800 by the time I pay fees and tax and shipping and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll break about even when I sell this. But, uh, this is a ton of guitar for the money. So why did I buy this guitar? Well, a couple obvious reasons. One, uh, being a guitar hunter, you just have to be open to what you find around you. You don't get to be super picky. So I can't hold back and just buy old Martins or old Tellys. You know, I have to kind of be able to see what is available in my local market and jump on it when I can. So this guitar came up and I think it's a ton of guitar for the money. The other reasons I bought it is I love this shape. I love the 14 size, which is kind of the triple O or OM comparison from Taylor. My favorite Taylor is a 714. Uh, I just love that body shape. I think it's such uh, just handsome, uh, good design. It's a good box. Uh, and so it gives you lots of volume and projection. So all of that, the deal was safe, it was good, uh, it worked out really well. So that brings us to the present state of this guitar. Uh, so the present state of this guitar, so he's restrung it with Martin Retros, which is a funny, interesting choice, on a guitar that is so uh, pressed forward at the best guitars in front of us with stylistic choices, design choices, uh, construction choices, and then you put Martin Retro strings like, you know, hey, let's make strings like in the 1960s. It's just an interesting pick. 
I mean, they're cool. They're nickel bronze, which I love nickel bronze strings. Um, but this guitar was made in April, and this is its first winter. And winters in Virginia are dry and cold, usually. Sometimes they're like 50 degrees and whatever. Anyway, um, this guitar is going through the first change that it will do the first couple years as it really starts to dry out for the first time. So... <laughs> So it's quite buzzy when you really dig in. When you really dig into this guitar, it does get buzzy and get thinner. That is just because it needs, uh, so it needs a very simple adjustment. I think the neck is just a little too tight, that truss rod. Yeah, this thing has just the tiniest bit of positive bow. So what I'm checking for there, if you don't know, uh, your truss rod has the ability to adjust the amount of relief in your neck this way. So if I lay it down, so you want it to be that way. So you want a little bit of relief, which means there's a small curve. And so basically it's between the third and the seventh or eighth fret really is the majority of where you want this to go. So as you loosen the truss rod, the headstock is gonna come forward, which means you're gonna have a little more dip so you can have too much to where the action is really high and spongy and goofy feeling, but you can also have it too low, which is what's happening here. So what's going on here is that it's just too tight. And so there's a tiny little hump, which means that these middle frets here are too high. And when they're too high, it makes the guitar buzz. So this first winter, that's a thing I would expect is that the neck is gonna relax, the truss rod's gonna uh, the truss rod and the neck are going to relax and therefore it's going to have a hump. So this guitar will sound awesome and easy to play. All I need to do is take maybe a quarter or a half turn off of that truss rod. Just bring it to where there's just a tiny little dip. All of that to say, the present state of this, uh, it needs a little truss rod relief, but other than that, it is tidy. It is clean. It's super like minty condition. There is no dings, dents, scratches, there's a tiny little one here. Maybe that's from like a case or a, a capo. I don't know. There's a tiny little ding here. You'd never even see it. I'm just seeing it because of the big light. So after I turn the truss rod, half a turn, a quarter turn, uh, this guitar will be sorted and it'll be totally ready to go. To someone that's going to be playing in the church or playing out or just playing around your house, you know, playing and writing new music and learning how to play new kinds of styles of guitar and all that. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you have a great, slow approach to Christmas. Uh, and that when Christmas hits, it's just a full-blown, top your soul off, fill your heart up. Because uh, that's the role of Christmas. It is a bright spot in a dark time of year. Uh, and this has been a dark and hard year. So, you're not alone. I'm glad that we're in this together. Alright, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.